What happened? Were you guys drinking? He was texting again, wasn't he? Do you like sushi? Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I'm unfriending you. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the movie club. We're your bad movie boys, Matt and Tommy. Unfortunately, Kali couldn't make it today. He's still protesting because we will not watch only Andy Sedaris movies. And we refuse to budge on this. Today we're watching another insane Lifetime movie, Stalked by My Doctor. <laughs> right away, we get a feel for the main character in this movie, Dr. Albert Beck, played by none other than Julia Roberts' brother, Eric Roberts. Look, you're very sweet, and I know the website says we're perfect for each other, but I just don't think it's a good match. He's a pretty high-ranking cardiologist, so I can't see why they would add this scene into the movie. It's not like he's gonna go crazy or anything. Cue him going crazy. Stupid bitch! Stalked is really putting it lightly for what happens in this movie. It's <laughs> just a practice scrimmage. How embarrassing. This is Sophie. She's our main character, cheering on head star of the Charlie Brown soccer team, Ryan. Her best friend, Caitlin, comes up to her and says that she's got some good news. Hey, check this out. I got accepted. Sophie, an honors student, is worried that she didn't get into college, so she has her friend Caitlin open her letter for her. Dear Miss Sophie Green, thank you for your recent application to Wittendale College. Unfortunately, we regret to inform you that you're gonna spend the next four years of your life at the most awesome college with me as your roommate. Ah, damn it. Life's going great for Sophie. Everything's going real well, but you know, everything good must come to an end, and her dumb boyfriend Ryan is driving her home when all of a sudden, he gets a case of the texting bug, and he cannot stop texting while driving. <laughs> so he blows through this green light, and then he gets T-boned, and then everybody's like, Oh, it was Ryan's fault! He was texting while driving! Hey, Sophie! I'm Dr. Beck. I need to take a look at your chest. Uh, Dr. Beck? She hit her head in that car accident. At any time after the accident, did you pass out? Okay, baby, one last question, and this is important. Do you like sushi? <laughs> Me too. When you get well, we'll have some sushi. <laughs> yeah, don't threaten her, Dr. Beck. So as Dr. Beck is for some reason examining her chest, even though she got a concussion, he tells her parents that a rib broke and shot through her heart and Ryan's to blame. Um, he gives love a bad name. <laughs> but they need to operate right now or she will in fact die. Hey, hey, this is a great hospital. I talked to the nurse, the doctor knows what he's doing. <laughs> Unlike that weird hospital where the doctor thinks laughter is the best medicine. So if he goes through the operation that Dr. Beck performs, and Dr. Beck just sort of puts the operation in God's hands. Doctor, I think we should- I said, hold on. Doctor, we need to do something. We'll do nothing and see how it goes. <laughs> if I would've known she was gonna pull through, I would've used anesthesia. <laughs> I'm guessing Dr. Beck just kind of winged this one because uh, he's a cardiologist, not a surgeon. I'm Dr. Beck, head of cardiology. The transition from him performing the surgery to what happens next when they're alone in her surgery room is incredibly jarring. Thank you. 
Oh, what the fuck? Sexual misconduct by my doctor. Mom, did Ryan stop by while I was out? No, honey. Are you sure? I could have sworn that he kissed me. My mouth tastes just like Ryan. Like, where are those originals and Cohibas? Did Ryan stop by and kiss me? Like, no, no, he didn't stop by. And then I was thinking, like, well, then whose gum is this? <laughs> did Ryan stop by and kiss me? Honey, Ryan will never walk again. Ryan doesn't chew Big Red. Yeah. Oh! Is it really 7.30? Why do you need to go? No, I've just been having so much fun this afternoon, I lost track of time. Unfortunately for Dr. Beck, when he meets up with Barbara, she is awake and conscious, and they start talking and the conversation spirals horribly out of control. I know it's a lot to lay on you in the first aid, isn't it? But hey, a little known fact, there are incredible international private schools in Baja, California. Great place to raise a family. You know what, I'm gonna go. Do me one favor. Just tell me what I'm doing wrong. Because I'm obviously doing something terribly wrong. Okay. We met four hours ago. We had coffee. We spent the afternoon together. But now you want me to bury your children and raise them in a foreign country? The foreign country of Baja, California? You're right. He took that better than the last time this happened. Thank you for the enlightened analysis, you fat ass bitch. Uh, good luck getting a boyfriend, because I'm not interested. I'm unfriending you. Yeah, that's my favorite like closing like live to an argument. Just, you know what? I'm unfriending you. That's it. This should be like Toxic Masculinity in the movie, starring Eric Roberts. So while this is happening, while Barbara is being unfriended by Dr. Beck, Sophie gets released from the hospital. And the first thing that she does is she goes back to Ryan just to check up on him. Hi. Hey. I emailed you. I called your parents' landline a dozen times. Why won't you talk to me? What am I supposed to say, huh? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a good start. How's your leg? <laughs> uh, my leg. My leg's perfect. Except for they told me I'm never gonna run full speed again. What was he, what was he thinking? He is fucking Sonic the Hedgehog. Dr. Beck continues his descent into being an adult incel. He daydreams an entire scenario in which Sophie shows up at his house and tries to seduce him. Sophie. I'm sorry. I know it's late. I just really needed to talk to you. And I know that I should have called first. No, really, it's okay. Please, come in. I know this sounds crazy, but I can't stop thinking about you. I feel the same way. I also cannot stop thinking about myself. Uh, but of course this doesn't happen because Eric Roberts is like 170 years old and Sophie is 18. So in any universe, like any half your age plus seven, this none of this works out to the correct math here. I won't tell. But in real life, Sophie gives Dr. Beck a little present for saving her life and a little love letter. Dr. Beck goes home and he opens the letter, he reads it. Dear Dr. Beck, up until this moment, I had no idea how precious and fragile life can be. You have given me the most wonderful gift of all. Thanks to you and your staff, I am alive. With no pun intended, my heart truly belongs to you. Oh. He is so touched by the letter that he's gonna turn around his whole personality. He realizes that, you know what? Stalking a patient is wrong. I should tell her that I kissed her in her sleep. I should just come clean. No. I'm just kidding. He follows her and her friend in their car and goes to the mall with them where he offers to buy them carrot cake. Yeah, you guys live around here? No, we're just addicted to the carrot cake at this place. I don't know why they really like carrot cake. I've never been to a mall where they're like, try our carrot cake. <laughs> Is this fucking weird? You guys mind if I join you? Go ahead. Our emergency room. Pretty douchey to give Dr. Beck as your name to the barista at the mall coffee place. I'm gonna go get some of that carrot cake. 
guys want some? Are you kidding? Yeah. Yes. Here, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Oh, wow. Uh, I'll be right back. Here's $100. That's how much a carrot cake costs, right? Yeah. I'm out of touch with reality. I made a barista write Dr. Beck on my coffee cup. So Sophie rejects Dr. Beck's advances. And like with everything before, Dr. Beck takes it really well. I think you guys are overreacting. Dad, he was looking at me like he had a crush on me. Mom, you're right. We should get a new doctor. What a terrible response from her father. Eddie's, well, he's a really good doctor. And like, we can't, she's still in a recovery period. We can't change doctors, no matter how weird this guy's being. Sophie is going to need a cardiologist to look after her for the rest of her life. And getting a doctor as good as Albert Beck, we'd have to fly Sophie to New York. You, you know that, like, he's old, right? Like, you know that he's not going to be around for more than, like, 10 years, give or take. He's probably already 10, 15 years past retirement age. What happens from this conversation with, like, the parents and Sophie, her dad agrees that, like, okay, he'll talk to Dr. Beck and just sort of set the record straight. And so he goes to Dr. Beck, Dr. Beck gaslights him. And by the way, you should know that what she's doing right now is extremely common. How so? It's natural for a patient to idolize their doctors. We save their lives. We are their heroes. And they make up fantastic scenarios about us, fantasies. No, no, Sophie doesn't really do that kind of thing. Jim, let me show you something. She gave me this. They've had the conversation. Dr. Beck knows the people are on to him, so he cools off a little bit and breaks into her bedroom when nobody is at home. He makes a little cum sleep. But luckily for Dr. Pervert, Ryan shows up and rings the doorbell so everybody's attention is on him and it gives Dr. Beck enough time to hide in the closet and also gives Sophie enough time to forget that she made her bed before she left. She, she walks in and she's like, oh, my room's such a mess. <laughs> oh my God, my room's a mess. Teenagers in their rooms, right? Dr. Pervert's hiding in the closet and he watches this whole spiel about Sophie and Ryan making up and then Ryan gives Sophie his grandmother's promise ring. So this kind of sets Dr. Beck off a little bit more and Ryan has a checkup the next day. So Dr. Beck decides to pull a sick prank on him. Well, let's check your knee out and show me what you're doing. Okay. What's wrong? Ryan just texted me like a man in his late 70s trying to make a joke. Ryan isn't the smartest. I mean, he was texting while driving, but even he knows that he did not send that text to his friend. So he figures out, it's gotta be Dr. Beck. This is the only place that I have not had my cell phone. So he goes to Dr. Beck's house and he confronts him and it goes about as well as you would expect when a one-legged man tries to fight an elderly man on a bunch of stairs. Up in real trouble. Hey, come on. Ow. Are you all right? Did you hurt yourself? How's this feel? Nobody wins. Going back to when Dr. Beck was sleep busting in Sophie's room, uh, I don't know if he said anything, but he walks in and he's like, holy shit, there's a lot of dolls. He shows up to the mall 
again, where Sophie's hanging out and he gives her a gift of a creepy ass little doll. Whoa. How did you know I like this kind of doll? I didn't. <laughs> I just had a little hunch. It goes really well with your, with your red comforter. She turns down his advances again, and that causes him to go into the, <laughs> I can't even say that's a straight face. This causes him to go into the mall bathroom and tear the doll apart. And that's not a euphemism for anything. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. In this movie, never do they explain like what the trigger was for all this. Regardless, Sophie tells her mom about this and then her dad agrees. Okay, we'll find a different doctor. So Sophie and her mom tell Dr. Misogyny that he's gone way too far with his doctor-patient relationship this time. I don't think you understand the seriousness of her condition. Oh, I understand just fine. Is Jim okay with this? You, did, you, did you talk to your husband about this? He thinks I'm a good doctor. Surely by now, enough people are on to him that he can just accept this and stay professional and no, oh, no, he's looking up her allergies in her medical file. He didn't have that on this movie's bingo card. <laughs> he does very little stalking in this movie. Honestly, he does, by my count, he does two stalks. He does a whole lot of other shit that's way worse. For instance, replacing all of Sophie's mother's menstruation medicine with penicillin, which she happens to be deathly allergic to. After like the mom is in the hospital and the doctor sees her and sees Sophie by the mom, like you see this like firefighter covered in soot walking down the hall past him, and he's like, "Huh, fire? Okay, yeah, I, I can work with that." Tragic news tonight, a young woman is dead after crashing her vehicle into a lamppost where it burst into flames here at the corner of Elsinore Drive and 22nd Street. Firefighters found the young woman's body burned beyond recognition, but they were able to trace the car back to her family and have now identified her as 18 year old Sophie Green of Los Angeles. Police show up and then they, they have like the whole thing that she died and then Dr. Beck has Sophie tied up to his bed now and you're wondering, how did all this happen? Well, Dr. Beck somehow managed to chloroform Sophie in her car, get her back to his place, go back to the office, steal a cadaver from the hospital morgue, steal a car, crash the car into a pole, move the cadaver to the driver's seat, set the car on fire, change her dental records, all while having nobody notice. He thinks that he's fooled everybody, but he hasn't fooled everyone. What if that body wasn't Sophie? Mrs. Green, please. We need to get to the bottom of this. Sophie's tied up and then she, she tries the oldest trick in the book on Dr. Beck. The way you touched me last night, I liked it. You did. Wait, really? Oh my god, it's working. This is disgusting in the context of the movie, and it's also disgusting that they had to film these scenes. I want to know what that feels like. You're an expert on the human body. You know what to do, don't you? He's a heart doctor. Not sure how pleasurable having sex with her heart is going to be. She, Sophie tries to stab Dr. Beck and he's not having it. He's too quick. His reflexes are really, really good for an 80 year old man. <laughs> Why would you do that? He, he, ha, he does some uh, surviving edged weapons style defense against that bad boy. You want to stab me? I'll take your arms. You want to run from me? I'll take your legs. You want to scream at me ever again? I'll take your voice. And then, Sophie Green, you will need me. 
to take care of you for the rest of your life. <laughs> is Dr. Beck immortal? Because again, this is now the second time people have mentioned him outliving Sophie. So either they think that somehow they see Dr. Beck and they think, wow, that young teenager is such a good doctor. Or they think that he did a terrible job and Sophie is going to die in the near future before Dr. Beck dies. So after she like tries to stab him, I guess he does like a real bad job of retying her restraints and she manages to slip out of them. <laughs> And she beats the absolute shit out of Dr. Beck. I love you. And instead of going immediately to the cops, and telling them what happened and getting some help, she shows up to her own funeral. And most of the time I think that this life makes sense. But today, I'm not so sure. I can't imagine the world without Sophie. And I can't believe I'm never gonna see her. I, I just wonder how Sophie's mom is still alive at this point because all of her medication is allergic death pills. Okay, cool, but uh, what happened to Dr. Beck? Está listo para ordenar? Todavía no. Estoy esperando a alguien. Muy bien. Be here minute. Somehow, there's four more of these movies, including Stalked by My Doctor, A Sleepwalker's Nightmare, where the description of this movie says, Dr. Beck falls for his first patient, Shelly, who suffers from nocturnal sleep sex. I don't even know what that means. That's the end of the movie. Uh, it's a wild ride where stalked is a very loose term used to describe this movie. It was it was a wild ride. Um, I didn't know exactly where this was going, uh, but I am here for all the sequels. I definitely want to see. I know there's there's one where he like lives in a family's attic and spies on the family. Like, and that's that's probably going to be terrible, but I want to see them all. That's the end of the movie. Uh, there are no consequences for anything, which is always a sign of a good movie. And so, Tommy, are you saying I do? Uh, yes, I do. Well, I do as well. You heard it here first. Tommy and I are both saying we do to this amazing movie, Stalked by My Doctor. Check us out again in a few weeks. Maybe we'll watch another one. Maybe we'll watch a different movie. To be honest with you, we don't really know. We just kind of wing it. <laughs> All right. See ya. Bye.